And now uh, the chair recognizes Ms. Mitchell for five minutes. Thank you, Chairman Cicilline and members of the committee. Uh, I really appreciate this opportunity to participate in this hearing and this historically important investigation. America's independent businesses are in trouble. They are declining rapidly across many sectors of the economy, and it's not because they can't compete. On the contrary, research shows that in many sectors they actually outperform their larger rivals including, on many measures, including price. Rather the, evidence that's, rather, the evidence suggests that the problem can be traced to changes in policy, and particularly our antitrust enforcement, that have allowed a few dominant corporations to consolidate markets and given them free reign to hobble their smaller competitors. Today, this, is really, this threat is really magnified in our digital markets. A handful of dominant players now act as gatekeepers. Amazon in particular, last year, Amazon captured about one of every $2 that Americans spend online. But the more consequential measure of its market power is that half of all online shopping searches now start on Amazon's platform. What this means is if you're is that for every, uh, virtually every company in the economy that either makes or, or retails anything, uh, increasingly to reach the online market, you have little choice but to sell through a platform that's run by your most aggressive competitor. This is a bitter pill. Becoming a seller on Amazon's platform means forfeiting to Amazon your product knowledge, a trove of data about your transactions. It means giving Amazon a sizable cut of your revenue, and it means entering into a relationship that is often predatory. Studies show that Amazon learns from the retailers on its platform and starts selling their most popular items itself. It has capsized businesses overnight by changing its terms, gating products so they can't sell them suddenly, or simply canceling their accounts without explanation. In the absence of competing platforms, there's no downward pressure on the fees that Amazon can charge sellers. And indeed, these fees now constitute a sizable tax on its competitors' trade. Um, and although Amazon didn't address this directly today, uh, it is true that in order to rank high and, and have a better chance of winning the buy box, you need to use its fulfillment services. And those fees have, have increased by double digits for the last few years. Amazon is many things. It's a platform, it's a retailer, it's a manufacturer, it's a digital ad giant, and so much more. And really, I think key to understanding its market power is that it's able to leverage the interplay between these different business lines to extort value from its competitors. An executive at a large, uh, well-known performance footwear brand that, that sells to Amazon told me that as long as his company sold to Amazon on their terms, they would help him police the counterfeiters and the other nefarious sellers on the platform. But the moment that they pushed back, that they didn't agree to that next big discount or, or the change in terms, Amazon's site became a wild west of sellers misrepresenting his brand, many overseas and unreachable. He said, quote, they use this as a punitive measure. They can sink companies without anyone to answer to. Increasingly, our commerce is occurring not in a market, but in a private arena governed by Amazon, where it has the power to regulate, tax, and punish America's entrepreneurs. And the consequences of this are being felt around the country. Um, there are a few metros that are doing well, but most places are not. Local businesses are disappearing, and with them, a pathway to the middle class. Producers are struggling to invest in new products and grow their companies. New business formation is down uh, to historic lows. And for many Americans, including those who walked out of an Amazon warehouse this week, work has become increasingly uh, exploitative because there are so few companies competing for their labor. Amazon would like us to believe that to challenge its dominance is to somehow challenge the digital revolution itself. But the issue here is not technology, it's power, and it's the policies that enable that concentration of power. In fact, the urgent risk we face if we do not act is that entrepreneurialism and invention will become increasingly stifled. I hope the committee will consider several policy, policy tools as part of this investigation. In particular, we very much endorse the approach that Congress took with regard to the railroads, that if you operate essential infrastructure, you can't also compete with the businesses that rely on that infrastructure. 
We also need non-discrimination rules for platforms, stronger enforcement against anti-competitive conduct, and changes to merger policy, particularly in light of the pivotal acquisitions that Amazon and other tech giants have made that have flown under the enforcement agency's radar. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Mitchell. The chair now recognizes Ms. Allhausen for five minutes.